Hello, my name is Lucky, and I'm an alcoholic. I first came into the program over 16 years ago, and uh, when I came in, I didn't see people who looked like me, and I didn't see people who sounded like me. Uh, I'm a transgender alcoholic, and uh, finding space in the rooms uh, was really difficult for me. Um, I uh, was raised in Michigan where, uh, you know, I come from a, a long line of alcoholics, addicts in the home, and trauma. I was sexually abused before I could walk. I uh, was in a domestic violence shelter by the time I was eight. Uh, I was sexually trafficked by the time I was 13. And I often say, you know, the trauma doesn't make me an alcoholic, but what it does is it installs the voices in my head that I have no friends, that nobody loves me, that I don't want to be here, that I want to get out. What makes me an alcoholic is when I picked up a drink or a drug, I thought it was a solution to the pain that I was in. I really feel like alcoholics live three lives, you know, the, the life of untreated alcoholism, which, you know, I would argue was the most painful one, where I believed that messaging that, you know, I was just, I had no friends, nobody loved me, and I don't want to be here. You know, I, I went through life believing that. And then as soon as I picked up a drink or a drug, uh, it put a stopgap to my suffering. It was the solution to deal with my the pain of being a human being. Um, I uh, came into the program pretty quickly after I started drinking because I knew I was an alcoholic. I knew I was an addict. I knew that you know this was the solution to treat that pain and suffering. Um, and I landed in the program and I didn't see anybody who looked like me or sounded like me. So I thought that the message of recovery was for everybody else and not for me. Um, I didn't last long in the program. I was trying to help other people, but I didn't think that there was a help for an uh, alcoholic like myself. Um, so I went back out. I went back out for 10 years and the pain and the suffering of those 10 years um, you know, it's hard to describe. Um, and then I didn't come back until, uh, you know, about uh, seven years ago. And I, I, I uh, did my first 90, uh, you know, I found, followed all the suggestions, you know, get a sponsor, 90 and 90, uh, don't pick up. Um, but I still didn't believe that the message of recovery was for me. And so I went back out. And I went back out 16 times after that first 90 days. Uh, because I didn't believe that the program was going to work for me. There wasn't language for people like me in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, you know, I, 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 uh, so I bounced around, you know, I, I would go to anniversary meetings and, you know, uh, the more time people had, the more, uh, you know, the more I thought that they were like King AA or Queen AA. Um, and I really respected the old timers in the beginning, um, but I can't tell you the number of times I've been chased out of a meeting for using the bathroom or uh, told that people wouldn't uh, sponsor people like me because of, you know, the men with the men and the women with the women. Like, I, you know, this is a life or death errand for me and people like me. Um, so it's really important that, like, when somebody asks you to sponsor them, you say yes. It's your job to love them and pass on the steps and, you know, the principles of this program because you know what my life depends on such things and I think about all of the people who who suffered you know I didn't get and stay sober until I walked into my first meeting of trans AA when I walked into that meeting of trans AA I heard the preamble and in that preamble they said Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of humans and my life changed um, I have not had a drink or a drug since then um, but I have still run into the, you know, same old despair, um, you know, from people who aren't working uh, their own program. You know, I, I was taught and did the steps like my life depended on it. I was taught that behind each step was a principle. Behind each tradition was a principle. And I did the concepts for world service. Each one of them has a principle. And so I started to learn that the program and the message of Alcoholics Anonymous was for me too. And I started doing service like my life depended on it. You know, uh, 
recently I went to a business meeting and I heard, you know, business meetings are little incubators for a lot of sick people. There's a lot of sick people in Alcoholics Anonymous. If you've ever been a business meeting, you know what I'm talking about. And in that business meeting, I heard the old timers telling me, find another meeting, go somewhere else, uh, start a special interest meeting. You are not welcome here. I have done enough uh, of the work on myself behind the principles of each of the steps, traditions, and concepts to know that I do belong here. I recently finished uh, reading uh, our great uh, responsibility in the talks of Bill W. and the importance of change in Alcoholics Anonymous. And, uh, you know, that meeting behind the uh, at that business meeting was about uh, the preamble change, you know. Uh, recently, a motion was made to change the AA preamble to Alcoholics Anonymous as a fellowship of people because there are more than just men and women in Alcoholics Anonymous. As a non-binary trans femme, it was important to know that I was welcome in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. And if this program can work for me a day at a time for the five and a half years that I've been sober, then it can work for you too.